and I'll open the discussion for you and I'm happy to answer any of your questions, John. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. So um, is it your thinking that the COVID vaccine, especially in combination with COVID infection, can accelerate the development of atherosclerosis? That's a very good question, in fact. So what happened is that when somebody had the two COVID vaccination, they have developed a lot of antibody to the COVID, okay? Then you come in and you give them a booster vaccination. That booster vaccination depends on the type of the virus, whether Emercon or Delta or BBX or VBX, whatever, is a different type, so it's called heterologous. When you do that, you are messing with the immunity of, the, of your body, creating an engine antibody reaction. This goes in and causes vasculitis. This vasculitis, if the patient had a previous bypass or a stent or had a previous endarterectomy, it accelerates the process of myointermal hyperplasia and inflammation and acute thrombosis. And we have witnessed that so often in our patient that we know now the minute the patient come post booster vaccination was a problem, we know heparin don't operate because if they operate, they'll never do well. Mm -hmm. Have you seen any of the pictures that the embalmers have been coming out with, with these long, white, uh, cast-type clots? Okay, that's a very good, this is a clinical question. So the white clot meaning that there's a lot of platelets aggregation. So mm -hmm. when the patient gets his vaccination in his arm, unfortunately, if it goes through directly through a vein in his arm, this will circulate and cause the engine antibody reaction and the vasculitis that I'm telling you about. The first effect on it is the platelet. And when you have aggregation of the platelet, it's always a white clot. The red clot is the fibrin that comes with the red blood cell called the red tail. is away from it and is just up to the next patent vessel. So what happens is that the minute you see that, we usually say that as a HIT syndrome or heparin-induced thrombocytopenia. Now we call it VITT, which I've shown it to you, vaccine-induced thrombocytopenia. And this is becoming so often in this patient. So my advice to the guys is that you have had your two vaccines, you had your booster, and you get an unspecified upper respiratory tract infection. You don't know whether it's COVID or not. Before you take any booster, just check your antibodies. If your antibodies are very high, please avoid taking any booster because you will do so badly. If you are hypertensive, if you are taking any medication for diabetes, if you are taking any medication for hypertension, the reason for that, your um, 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 uh, genes and your receptors are open for reaction to such a, a, a reaction and you'll do badly. However, if you are normal, no antibodies, that's fine. Nothing will happen to you and you could do whatever you like, but it's rare to find that. And currently people, as you can see that, now they're asking people above 80 to get the booster vaccination. Excellent. So what sort of scientific evidence do you have? It is just an advice. Just show me a published paper telling that the above 80 will benefit. They will not get Bell's palsy. They will not get Grand Barry. They will not get uh, a stroke. There's nothing. So I'm not saying don't take it, but we must have a scientific evidence to tell us that it's good to be given and there will be no harm to this patient. And don't tell me it's 1 in 10,000 because we have seen the complication. We need to prevent this complication. And if you come and clean and said, yeah, we had 15%, which is the published rate of complication across the whole world, 15%. Oh, it's 1 in 10,000. It's not 1 in 10,000. We need to be clear. We give them informed consent. And if the patient is happy, excellent. But do not deceive my patient. You have to be honest, straightforward. And if everybody on the same wavelength will go in and I'll be the first one, give the booster. But I must have solid scientific evidence. So you think a lot of the problems that we're seeing in terms of vasculitis and uh, vascular occlusions could be people that have had active COVID infection and then just through sheer bad timing got the COVID booster vaccine shortly after that COVID infection. John, you're very smart. That's exactly it in a nutshell. Mm-hmm.
Amazing. Yeah. So all we have to do is check. But the, the embalmers have been seeing. I'm familiar with the white white thrombus. We've seen white thrombus, of course, causing things like uh, acute coronary syndrome and, and non STEMI, non ST elevation, myocardial infarction. But there's a new phenomenon where there's like long stringy clots that perhaps are rich in amyloid as well as platelets and fibrin. Have, have you seen? I mean, some of the embalmers are finding clots here, of, which are which are, you know. 10, 20, 30 centimeters long. Have you seen anything of that nature? Um, you see, when we do a bypass and there's a clot, the clot will be almost about at least 75 centimeter long from the common iliac down to the popliteal artery. So it's, it will be a very long clot. The whole idea when somebody got any sort of vasculitis is the uh, micro clots or the small clots that's circulating in that causes a lot of problem. And people said, oh God, this guy, never been well uh, since he had his COVID. The reason for that, he have uh, a lot of microclots all over and he need to be treated. And I think that the maintenance of the oral heparin or Eliquis or Zolarto or whatever they have in your area to give for this particular patient with recurrent thrombosis and microclots, that's why all this patient must be monitored by D-dimer. D-dimer is a, a, a byproduct of the clots and if the dimer is raised above 500, you just keep them on the duac and, and just keep them going because if you don't do that, they'll end having a problem with the lungs, uh, right ventricular strain, they're all short of breath, they cannot exercise, they cannot go up uh, one floor because the right heart has failed because they have pulmonary embolism. At the same time, people come to you, oh God, I can't think, I have a fogged brain. The reason for that is, as I've shown you, for whatever happened in Australia is the transfers and the sigmoid sinus clots. They cause problem of, of uh, venous hypertension inside the brain. And that's why the brain doesn't have enough venous return back. It's mimic like if somebody have an MS because of the jugular vein um, uh, stenosis. So we have a lot of things that happen in COVID that's not written in the medical books. We need to treat, to train, and educate everybody because not everybody is au fait with what's going on. And remember, whatever you learn by the time you graduate is obsolete the minute you're becoming an intern. So we need to keep educating, we need to inform the patient, we need to inform the physician. The problem we need a specialist in COVID, not in microbiology, not in virology, not in um, uh, GIT, just a COVID specialist. He'll be able to go in and dig deep and you know yourself when you have somebody specialized in something, he will excel and give us the solution that we're looking for. We cannot be the jack of all trades. There's a lot of challenges, as I said, around us. And I myself, I have to read every day in order to satisfy myself and my patient because the patient come what we usually call now internet print syndrome. They come in with a lot of things. Half of it I don't know because he have read this in here, this and that. So currently, knowledge is power. And the more knowledge you get, the more powerful you are. And that's why the politicians have all the knowledge because they have a lot of advisors. But unfortunately, they use it in the wrong way. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's clearly, there's clearly an increase in micro-clotting. That's what the embalmers call dirty blood, where you have lots of little clots. But there's also the, the white amyloid-based clots. Have you, seen the, have you seen the pictures from those from embalmers? I, I've seen the... I've shown you the... Uh, uh, publication about the myocarditis and its effect and they were have mentioned that in their paper it's just been published a couple of weeks ago yeah. and it's exactly uh, you know what I mean when somebody have a cardiac amyldosis it's untreatable patient lifespan is about 18 months to 24 months and there's no treatment for it that's a problem and the problem of chronic amyldosis in the heart or in the arteries is just extensive amount of inflammation which comes in from the COVID or from the COVID vaccination or from the booster vaccination, whatever it is, I, I, I cannot tell you which one of them, but it causes this state of continuous inflammation that's unstoppable. And this creates a lot of thrombosis in the vasovasoma of the arteries. And this leads to later on the acute thrombosis because of the inflammation. And if the patient have atherosclerotic plaque or have a 80% occlusion or have a previous bypass, they do very badly. Mm -hmm. 
But there's kind of a debate at the moment as to whether these white clots that the embalmers are seeing after death are recurring in life. So are these white clots that people are seeing the cause of death or is it some post-mortem phenomena? Have you got a view on that? Okay, so again, let's go back to basis. I'm a vascular surgeon. I opened the artery after a patient came in with an acutely thrombotic limb or stroke or I opened the carotid artery and the minute I see a white clot, that means that the patient has the reaction for something being given to him. Whether it is an antibiotic, whether it is a medication, whether it is some uh, viral infection, whatever it is, the white clot meaning that there's a platelet aggregation without fibrin. It's, it's, it's just crazy. The minute you know, you see it, you know that you are in hot water and the outcome will not be great. The problem was that happened before this, after this, definitely it, it's the cause of death because that's why the patient died. The problem is that how to prevent it, the only thing that we have it in our hand currently is to give them the heparin or the oral heparin, the wax, whether uh, again Eliquis or Zolarto or Enduxan. The, we need to know about it earlier and in order to know it earlier you need to come to the hospital and you know the hospital is under extreme pressure, patient comes in with a little bit of coughing, they treat him as if he has a, uh, the winter flu, they give him some medication, send him home, next thing he dies, he get a corner phone call, they done a PM, why the patient wasn't admitted. So currently it's a major problem and definitely it needs a lot of training, a lot of teaching and a lot of investigation. But to tell me today that somebody coming with 75 years of age with a cough to the accident emergency, are we going to do a, a CT pulmonary angiogram and do D-dimer and do this and this? He's been seen by the SHO giving oral antibiotic and send home because they have a protocol, query mycoplasma and pneumonia, they give him a little bit of augmentin or a little bit of azromycin and he's gone home. And then next phone call, the family found him dead in the bed. That's the problem. We don't have protocol for this patient because we don't have COVID specialists available for our patients. Mm. Are, are you seeing any white clots now that you didn't see prior to 2020? Is there any new pathology? Uh, in that in you're fact, seeing? since the there was a huge push for a, a, a booster vaccination and whenever this huge push was happening in 2021, 2022, we had a major surge of acute thrombotic event because of this. Currently, this has gone silent. We don't see anything at all because nobody, and even if you ask somebody, they will not be interested for going for COVID because he had heard somebody got a, a, a COVID booster and had problem with it. So we haven't seen it in the past uh, at least six months in my service, at least. But what I'm saying that things could deteriorate as time goes by because they're starting again another um, uh, booster vaccination. I'm sure that if they are not careful enough about how they're going to deal with this patient, who are going to be offered, take a particular history and see what medication they're taking and to have be very careful for patients who had some sort of a respiratory tract infection or laryngitis or a cough in the past six months. If they don't do that, we'll go to square one again and we'll have another surge of this uh, vasculitis query uh, uh, white clots. But you, you saw white clots in 2020, 2021, 2022 that you had not seen prior to 2020? No, I didn't. We have seen it before for patients who have heparin-induced thrombocytopenia. Now we change that name to vaccine-induced thrombocytopenia. Right, right. Okay, so previously meaning that the patient comes in, you give him heparin, and then they develop antibodies and their platelet count drop from 120 to 40. That's a diagnosis of HET syndrome. We see that now for patients who had the uh, reaction to the booster vaccination. They get vaccine-induced thrombocytopenia. They come in with acute thrombosis and a drop in the platelets. Mm. So what, what's the takeaway message, Professor, on, on booster vaccinations? Just, you say? first of all, sit and think seriously. Yeah. There is nothing 100% right and there's nothing 100% wrong. There is always the way that you have to, which we call precision medicine. Yeah. Everybody is different from everybody. We need to understand, is this going to benefit me or this is going to create problem for me? So if I am a guy who have previous stents in the heart, have a previous bypass, diabetic and hypertensive, 
you have to be very careful about what you put in your body and extremely careful of taking booster vaccination however if you are young guy healthy no problem with you never to take anything at all because it harm you more than benefit you yeah so basically the, the science now currently does not recommend anything yeah, and do you think do you think that there should be anyone that does come in for vaccinations, like we're still vaccinating people at risk in the UK and the over seventy five? Should should we question them and say, look, have you had any active infection or knowingly had COVID in the last six months? If so, do not get a booster vaccine. In fact, rather than do not, because you know some of your colleagues hey, do not. Let's say that do the antibodies, and if the antibodies are of certain level discuss with your GP and the advice will be avoided because you could get cytokine storm just you know people hate to say no now okay and like everything else you know what I mean we need to be smarter than them because yeah. they, they'll try every time to go around everything so we're yeah. not saying no we say just investigate yeah. analyze it see the benefit the harm and whether to take it is a good idea or not yeah Great. Thank you very much, Professor. All completely fascinating. The whole idea of what you need to do to attract more people, a balanced view. We are not saying it's yeah. wrong. It's a balanced yeah. view. We are discussing science. We are not anti-vax. The problem yeah. is people that, oh God, they're crazy. They're anti we are not. We yeah. are not yeah. at all. We are trying to be as scientific as we can. Great. Great. Thank you, Professor. Thank you very much. Yeah. Th thank, thank you. Thank you. Bye.